Okay, um, welcome back. So today we have some bugs we need to fix. Uh, the first one, and this has been kind of going on for quite some time, is sometimes when you make a match and you have your new pieces fall in and there's a new match made, and new pieces fall in and there's a new match made, your board will go from being in the wait state, which is where it should be in between moves, to being in the move state, which would allow the player to kind of do make some weird stuff happen on the board if they were to move a piece again. You could end up with two pieces in the same spot or something like that. So um, let me just see if I can make that happen here really quickly. Um, like I said, it only happens when you have pieces falling in again and again and again and again. So let me, I might need to speed up my footage here to show you how it happens. So I might do that really quickly. See right, right there. It's in the move state, and it was not done clearing the board. So that right there is an issue we need to fix. So let's get started on that one first. Um, if we open up our board script here, so I already have mine open. We're going to fix this in two different ways, uh, and I've alluded to both of these ways before. Uh, the first way is we're going to make sure that when pieces fall in, they don't fall in with a match already there. So what we want to do here is in the board script, we want to go to our refill board method. And we're going to add the same kind of check we do in setup and also with the reshuffle method, where we're going to make sure that we're not placing a piece into a spot that already has a match. So to do that, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to initialize a new variable, which I'm going to call max iterations, which is how many times we're going to go through a while loop I'm going to create. So we're going to say int max iterations is equal to zero. Um, and that's just to make sure that we don't put ourselves or the program into an infinite loop. Then we want to check to see if we're putting a spot in a place that would have a match. So while matches at is the method I'm going to use, which is from above, and this takes three arguments. The first argument is the column second argument is the row, and the third argument is the game object that we're looking for a match with. And in this case, that would be dot square brace dot to use. And then what we want to do is if there is a match at that spot, we want to first increase our iterations. So max iterations plus plus, and then we also want to reassign dot to use. So I'm going to grab that from up here. I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it down here. The other thing I forgot to do is I forgot to actually put in my check here on the while loop to make sure it only does it at most 100 times. So and max iterations less than 100. And then at the end of the loop, when I'm outside of it, I'm going to reset max iterations back to zero. And this whole max iterations thing, like I said, with a while loop, you could end up with a situation where the program is just consistently running through that loop again and again and again because you might have a situation where that loop can never be fulfilled. So we're going to make sure that at most we're going to run through it a hundred times. Uh, so let me save my script here really quickly. Now that's one place where the issue is coming from. The other place, <laughs> I uh, did some coding earlier and did not record it properly, so forget, pretend I'm not doing this, but this is going to be how we're going to fix it. I alluded to this being an issue earlier. Um, there's things called magic numbers that programmers have a tendency to use, because when you're programming something, you very much want it to be able to work right away. You don't want to have to uh, play with it four or five times before it will actually work, and so programmers will tend to just pick a random number and put it in somewhere, especially when you're dealing with a, a weight. So they'll just put in one second or half a second or something like that. Those are called magic numbers because in order to change that, you have to actually go into the code to make a change. So let me grab one here really quickly that I can show you. So this is a magic number and this is a magic number, which again, I'm going to address those pretty soon here. Um, <laughs> Where is a good one? Here, right here. And in fact, this is what's causing the issue, is this magic number right here. 
um, this wait for seconds 0.4 f. Um, because when I was making this method, I just randomly picked a number because I didn't want to do it the long way, which is the right way. So let's actually do this the right way this time. Uh, so up here in my public, or not my public, my global variables, I'm going to create a new uh, float, which I'm going to use to uh, be my, my refill delay, we'll call. So public float refill delay, and I'm going to initialize this to 0.5f. Um, so I can change this in the editor now because it's public, but now I'm using an actual variable amount. Now, the reason that this is important, let me kind of walk you through what was happening to cause the program to go into a state it shouldn't have been in. Um, so it would find matches and then it would go into that destroy matches method and then destroy matches would cause refill board to be called and refill board would check to see if there are matches on the board and it okay right here so refill board it would wait half a second and then while there are matches on the board it would wait another half a second destroy the matches and then it would keep going through here until there weren't any matches on the board well the problem is um i had the board refill too slowly which meant that the board would still be refilling while it was checking to see if there were matches on the board it wouldn't detect any matches because the board was still refilling. And so then it would jump out here. It would clear the current matches, set current dot to null, check if it's deadlocked, um, and then set the game state back to move way before it should have done that. And then the game state would kind of stay in move because it wouldn't be called back to wait because we weren't using the dot at all. So what I need to make sure that I do is change these in this fill board coroutine change these from being 0.5f to being the refill delay, which I know doesn't change anything yet. And then when I'm waiting here, I want this to be twice the refill delay. So two times refill delay to make sure that it stays in this loop just a little bit longer. Um, and then the other thing I want to do, I'm going to have this be the refill delay as well. Um, so the, the delay that keeps it in the loop is um, is twice as long as the uh, delay it takes to refill the board. But then when I'm using my refill coroutine, or my decrease row coroutine rather, sorry, not, not refill, uh, I want to change this from being just this magic number of 0.4f. I want it to be refill delay times 0, oops, 0.5f. So I want it to be half the time it takes for that refill delay. And I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna put it in both my decrease row coroutines even though I'm only using one of them. And I very well easily could delete the other, but I'm a little neurotic like that. So I'm gonna save my script here really quickly. I'm gonna pop back into Unity. Uh, go out of play mode, because it's gonna bark at me to say that it can't find an associated script. Otherwise, I'm gonna let it think for a second play and now I can try this out really fast um, again I'm watching the current state of the board so right now it's in move um, I make a match switches to wait and, oh gosh it still switched to move too early okay so this is me again sorry for that weird cut there um, I had just done something I thought would work and it didn't work and I know why now. So back here in the board routine, uh, in the fill, build, fill board co routine method, um, you want to have, so here's why it didn't work. So while matches are on the board, it waits two seconds and then it destroys matches, which means after it destroys matches, it's going to immediately check for matches on the board, but there's no delay between destroying the matches and refilling the board for it to have that time to see if there are new matches on the board. So this destroy matches, like there's essentially no reason to have this refill delay there. Um, the destroy matches needs to come before the delay. So I'm going to cut that line from there and paste it up above um, my yield return statement. So now when it accesses the loop, it's going to destroy matches wait for two seconds, 
and then check to see if there are matches on the board again. Or not two seconds, one second. And then check to see if there are matches on the board again. So that's a very frustrating small error. Now there are still bugs in the script though. So let me see if I can make one here. Um, or sorry, not in this script, but uh, in the program itself. So if I were to turn this piece right here into an adjacent bomb, like a wrapped candy, then when I swip it over, I'm going to have um, a weird null reference exception error. Uh, same thing will happen if I turn this one or this one into a column bomb. So if I jump into my scene here, I'm just going to grab this one to show you. Uh, I'm going to turn column bomb on. And I'll go back to game. It doesn't have the graphic, but we know that's supposed to be a column bomb. If I flip flop that, oh, ha, huh, I did the wrong kind of bomb, sorry. Uh, Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, let's grab this one. Adjacent is what I meant to say. And I said call. Okay, so I want this to be uh, an adjacent bomb. There we go. So I'm going to flip flop these two. And I get a null reference exception error. And that null reference exception error is coming from um, get adjacent pieces, which is in find matches. Uh, and that's because when I went back through to fix all of that, non-defensive stuff I did with the blank spaces, I forgot to fix this. So let's open up the find matches script here really quickly. I think I already have mine open. I do. And what line was that on? Line 185. Okay. So match pieces of color, board all dots, get component is matched. Cool. Um, and so the reason it's it's happening is right here. It says it's 185. It's actually 184. That's the problem because I never checked to make sure that that's actually uh, an okay piece to grab. So I'm going to say if dots, wait, 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 no, no, it's not dots I want. It's board.all dots. If board.all dots ij is not null then I'm going to do all of this stuff. So two ways, well, three ways so far. And that me being sloppy has come back to haunt me. So let me be a cautionary tale for all of you. Um, let me save my script here really quickly. Let me just make sure. Yeah, I actually checked to see for the column and the row pieces. I checked to make sure that they weren't null. Good Lord. Um, let's see if I have any similar issues uh, with color. Yeah, no, I, I did the right check on color. Um, the other thing I want to do really quickly here, here's another issue. So first let me make sure that last bug was fixed um, before I introduce you to another bug that nobody's mentioned yet, but uh, is an issue. So let me turn this piece into an adjacent bomb. It's adjacent bomb. Jump back to game. And if I flip flop, cool. I have this weird screen position. Don't. That's it's nothing. That's just my computer freaking out. But I didn't get a null reference exception error that time. So there we go. That's one error that's fixed. Now um, another error here. I'm gonna make this let me make this one. Yeah, I'm gonna make this one a color bomb. So when I make it a color bomb, you wouldn't expect it or you would expect it to uh, detonate everything when I get this match. But if I swipe up here, color bombs still act like they're pieces of their own color, and the reason why is because I never did anything to change the tag system when I implemented color bombs. For example, if I turn this one into a color bomb and I swipe it with the red, I think it'll destroy these oranges instead of the red or it'll destroy the oranges and the red. Um, let's see which one it does. So is color bomb, yeah, it destroyed the oranges and the red. Um, and that's because it still remembered what color it was. So to fix this, 
error. We're going to go into the dot script. And I want to go all the way down to where we make a color bomb. Cool. So color bomb, we just turn this on. But we have to also change the tag. So we want to grab the tag of this game object and we want to change it to be something new. So we'll do this dot game object dot tag equals let's just do color. And can I not do that? Oh, because I use double equals because I'm thinking about operators because of something I recorded earlier. Okay, cool. So if I save that, um, let me play until I get a match of five here. And then we can see that the color bombs tag stays the same. Oh, no, 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 no. All right, I'm going to speed up this footage. OK, so. I was able to get um, the color piece to appear, but automatically it says tag color not defined. And so that just means I need to make sure that my project has color defined as a tag. So um, just click on any object here. I want to go to add tag. And the tag I want to add, so plus, is capital C color. And then that way the color dots um, will act different than others. So yeah, those are the three big um, bugs that I noticed in the program. The first is that it switched from wait state to move too soon. The second is that uh, the adjacent bomb method wasn't properly defended. And the third was that the color bombs were registering as both color because the color bomb was ticked on and whatever their uh, actual color was before we turned them into color bombs. Now, I know that when we get things like row bombs and everything in this right now, uh, it doesn't look super great uh, because we just have like that arrow transposed right on top of it. Uh, that's something that I'm going to remedy soon. Um, we'll have custom versions of these that we can do for uh, row and column, and then for color, we can, I, don't know, I can make like a chocolate piece so that it's similar to Candy Crush. Um, next, I'm going to do a video on how to make the bombs chain together because that's been requested for a while. Uh, I was going to have that be part of this video, but this video went on too long, so I'm just going to move that on to its own thing, um, and that'll probably come out tomorrow. And then, what's next after chain bombs? We can do special bomb interactions um, or sounds. I think sounds is what's on the schedule. So you can do that. And then special bomb interactions, like if you default to row pieces or row or column, how to make that work the way it does in Candy Crush. So yeah, um, feel free to give me a like if you learned something new today. Um, you can give me a like if you didn't learn anything new. Uh, it's fine too. <laughs> and uh, have yourself. Oh yeah, so down below there's a git link, or a link to the git repository for this project, which I forgot to update last time. I had updated it, but I didn't push, I didn't actually push it out. Um, so that's down below. There's a link to my Twitter, where you can find out when I post new videos. And there's a link to a Discord channel, where you can find me chatting pretty much every day. So yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, have yourselves a wonderful day.